All right, everyone, if I'm wheezing a little bit today or sound a little bit off, uh, I am. The allergen count is literally through the roof and the humidity, too. So, uh, yeah, I suffer a little bit with things like that. Uh, it could be a problem this time of year. I don't know which allergen it is. It's probably some sort of fucking tree. The trees are squirting their sperm around. And it's trying to get into my respiratory system and my, my cells uh, think that it's a, a virus or something. Always remember when you suffer from allergies, that's what's happening, which is hilarious. But uh, it's time to talk about propaganda tactics again. I like to keep people, you know, generally aware and, and remind them, hey, you know, if you look for it, you're going to find a hell of a lot of examples of active propaganda being flung around constantly. Every single day you'll read it in the news. You know, anything that's political analysis typically is going to have some propaganda tactics uh, sprinkled throughout. It can be benevolent. It can be like, hey... You know, a lot of hyperbole directed at someone who's like, you know, literally shitty, like a total authoritarian. Or it can be very male uh, malevolent. Mostly it's malevolent, which is the unfortunate part. Most of it's used by the establishment because the establishment happens to have the, be the biggest resources when it comes to putting out news and, and political and social analysis. Uh, none better than, you know, some of the larger groups. You think of CNN or a Fox or something. Uh, and then you've got the, the mollusk media that's smaller. But even the mollusk media, I point this out, Right Wing Watch has one-fifth my audience. Everybody at Right Wing Watch combined on all of their accounts aren't as big as just my YouTube uh, channel. But they've got a much bigger budget. They've got a budget that's on par with PewDiePie. They're a multi-million dollar company. It's actually hilarious that this is the case. <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, you know you're not get exactly getting proper returns on your investment, I think. Uh, you wouldn't survive in the stock market. <clears throat> but here we uh, talk about one tactic, which is simply repeating a lie until it becomes true. And it's elementary. It's basically like, this person is a racist. And they're like, well, no, I'm not a racist. And then that gets bounced around from person to person, often within a partisan echo chamber that then eventually bleeds over into, you know, people who are less politically aware. In, in other words, centrists, normies. It's especially... Uh, the case with online personas. Defaming people whose primary claim to fame is big online is easier because there are a lot of people that can be reached potentially uh, by a newsprint write-up, something on cable, uh, that aren't really part of the, the tech community. And you've got to understand, most people do not care enough about a story to actually dig into it to find out whether what they're reading about is actually true. That's another thing. Those of us who analyze politics, we may say, well, a claim is being made within the media. It could be legacy media, alt media, missing link media, doesn't really matter. A claim is being made. I'm going to go see some other sources, you know, number one, politically biased sources, so I can get a little bit of spin and sort of determine who's more full of shit, but also try to dig into it to at least some degree, come up with my own opinion based on, you know, in some cases, nothing more than a best guess uh, about what is actually true because in many cases when you're dealing with society or politics totally subjective it's not straight reporting it can't be straight reporting because it's within the realm of human opinion it's it's mostly predictive it's like well this candidate will be bad for the economy you have no idea they could get elected and and because of them or in spite of them the economy skyrockets vice versa you could be totally right maybe there's another great depression just because someone uh, entered the Senate or somebody became governor, your state's economy collapses entirely. It's possible, but you don't know that. It's just basically a guess that you're making. But it's presented as though it was true. For instance, in the wake of the election when Trump uh, gets elected, Krugman and others saying basically the end is nigh. But another great recession is certainly going to hit. Over a year on, and that hasn't happened, the economy's doing fine. So that was obviously wrong, but it was presented as though it was a, a legitimate fact. But the, uh, predict, uh, the uh, repeat of a lie is more malevolent. It's, it's almost always going to be a negative thing. It can be directed at maybe a tyrant or something, but if someone's tyrannical and shitty, you don't really need to lie about them. You can do straight reporting, and it sort of speaks for itself. Sometimes they're really wily, and they can actually get around uh, that uh, sort of countermanding of their behavior, uh, but not usually. Most Mostly tyrants destroy themselves. It's a good uh, thing that they do <laughs> in some cases. For instance, um, there are many lies that are spread in the legacy media about political commentators on YouTube. A big, uh, big one, I'll be talking about this somewhat later, 
right wing watch and Huffington Post sort of joining forces to call Stefan Molyneux a racist or uh, Ianopolis or something like they were like the heads of the Nazi party. Now, Molyneux is not racist. He's attacked Islam before, Islam being, of course, not a race. Um, on no objective measure, though, is he a racist individual, but it's presented as though it's true to the echo chamber sort of community of Huffington Post in a separate doxing article that's about Amy Meckelberg. And again, I'm going to get into that a little bit later, so I won't say anything more about that now. The idea is to simply repeat this lie. Or so somebody is an extremist. Somebody is bigoted. This person is sexist. That person is... Whatever, you can do this in a positive way. Oh, this person is wonderful. This person is great. Trump does this. Some of the platitudes that he gives to himself are straight out not true. But people have come to believe it if they're part of his uh, general uh, support base. Now, of course, you can think that Trump is an okay president, so it sort of exonerates him. But, or you can assume that it's for benevolent purposes to screw with the, the swamp, as you may term it. That's fine, but it's still, it's, it's a half-truth in some cases, maybe not a full lie. And that's uh, also the case. Sometimes you'll see something that gets spun around and then repeated, like we saw with George Soros. George Soros uh, aided Nazis. But if you decide to uh, split hairs and say, well, but there was no malevolence involved when he was doing that, or he was just a teenager at the time and therefore it's, it's more okay than if somebody else did it, you can split hairs and you can spin that around and make it sound less draconian because simply aided Nazis sounds rather malevolent now, doesn't it? If you limit your info uh, input to just that, it sounds very bad. Once you get into the details, it's a little bit different. In all honesty, that is true, but he did aid the Nazis. But Snopes and CNN and MSNBC and HuffPost and all these others that defend the establishment, they don't want you to focus on that aspect of George Soros. They want you to think of him as a kindly old philanthropist who's trying to bring forth a better, more progressive world or some other bullshit slogan that's thought up next by these people. So you just repeat the lie over and over again and typically bounce it around. For example, uh, the, the sort of rational wiki stuff regarding me and my supposed views on the Holocaust that aren't actually real. That gets bounced around, that gets taken up and, and used by, you know, right-wing launch. That gets taken up uh, separately and used by the Wall Street Journal, and then BuzzFeed grabs it, spins it around further, and doesn't even echo what the original article says because it's been lost in translation through several steps of the game of telephone at this point. And they do a separate write-up to claim something different, but it's presented as though it was true. It's presented as though it's objective truth despite the fact that it's actually a lie. But it's going to get repeated by others. I mean, I'm not under the illusion that this is not going to happen. It's obvious that I'm on their radar, the same as thousands of other people are. Let me, let me tell you if you're on the radar of the establishment corporate crooks. Do you have a large audience and are you at least semi-independent? That's all you have to accomplish. You don't even have to talk about politics. Look, they, why do you think they attack PewDiePie? He takes part of their audience too because he occasionally delves into current events. Now he's even got his own little news show that he does where he laughs about things, and he gets bigger audience than fucking Anderson Cooper. So it's hilarious. Uh, I think uh, Paul Joseph Watson was saying, I think it was Paul Joseph Watson a few days ago, that his, uh, his audience at this point is rising up towards the level of people who would be considered A-list celebrities on the nightly news. So, yeah, it's, uh, there's a reason that they're attacking us. Can you guess what that could possibly be? Why would a media group that supposedly is charged through journalistic ethics with presenting the truth, why would it devolve into tabloid garbage on a regular basis, try to isolate the online content from the real-world impact, uh, at least directly so that the, the normies don't see them for the defamatory assholes they are? It's all about money. Again, you've got to understand, like with Right Wing Watch versus Styx Hexenhammer, much bigger audience for Styx Hexenhammer, much bigger budget for them. Less efficiency. Yeah, they got free money rolling in from George Soros in, in the most literal sense. I'm not being a conspiracy theorist. It's who funds their parent company. Uh, it's part, it's sub, uh, sort of a subsidiary, I guess, of the Open Society Foundation in a roundabout way, uh, to the tune of multiple millions a year. But the thing is, uh, despite their large budget, they have less of an impact in the world. In fact, they have basically no measurable impact beyond antagonizing YouTubers, which is how they, I guess, justify their high budget at this point. They're hoping that'll save them. You look at their YouTube channel, it's like, what, 
I don't even think they're at 40k yet. And they've been around as long as I have. It's really funny. I'm going to lap them again at some point, probably in the next few months, by the way. Uh, but yes, the legacy media, you got to understand, if you do intend to go into political discourse, social discourse, even alt entertainment, like a PewDiePie, yeah, hit pieces eventually will be written about you, and that's when you know you've succeeded, because you're big enough to be on their radar. It's actually, it's almost a little bit of a compliment when you've got some, you know, obsessed stalker pundit nemesis. Uh, like an O'Brien or a Holt or something that's constantly gunning after you and other people around you, it's a little bit of a compliment because people are literally wasting their time writing hit pieces about you when they could be doing actual journalism and sort of saving the old guard media by going back to doing what the news is supposed to do, which is present the news. They don't do it anymore. The news, I guess, they, uh, they got hoodwinked into tabloid spew. Uh, because they realized that real-life clickbaiting was more popular. It, it got them more ratings. Well, now they're all doing it, so they are just strangulating themselves. The problem is they're going to keep doing this. There's no way to wean themselves off of that drug without a massive media-wide reform movement that'll never actually happen. And then the alt-media would rise up, and there'd just be more clickbait here, probably. There'd be more weird side of YouTube, and it would grow twice as large. That's about all. Peace out.